Oh, Rob. So it was on the Vista back in 2019, just before the pandemic. I was still a relatively green cruise director. I've only been doing it for about nine months at that point. And I was handing over from one of the most seasoned cruise directors, one of the most the popular. He was the star of the show at that point. It was Matt Mitch. And you ever heard Matt? Oh, yeah. Okay. Big six foot seven, beautiful Englishman, blue eyes, huge ears. He was the star of the show. And so I was taking over from him, and it was a bit daunting, but me and Matt were really good friends. He actually trained me up. So we were there off the ship, and it was a really cool time. It was 4th of July, and we were there, and it just happened that John Heald, our brand ambassador, also a really big deal, was on the ship. And so it was the 4th of July cruise. We were sailing the night's past. It was elegant night. I'll never forget this. We were in Matt's cabin, going over hand over notes while the show was going on in the theater. And I was an elegant night. It was flick, and it was right before the time my life lifts. It was around 747. And the lights in the cabin go off. And I was like, no, turn the lights off. Why are you being so weird? He was like, that wasn't me. And if anything ever happens on the ship, and it's not intentional, it's usually not good. And we just heard, and we were like, oh God. And so he like throws the mic around me. He was like, go to the lounge and clear the audience. I'm going up to the bridge. And so he goes running up to the bridge. I go to the audience, view, clear the lounge. We don't know what's happening. So we always want to make sure, especially the safety performers, we get everyone out of the house and we out, out into the uh, main atrium on this, the class that goes right out into the main atrium, right? So then I go upstairs with, uh, with Matt, meet him on the bridge, and we're up there, and there's just like alarms going off across the entire console. The Italians are running around like crazy. They're like, they're calling on people, the radios are going, me and Matt are just like, why are we up here? We are so unqualified for this. And we have to, but anytime that there's something goes on, you have the cruise director, which is the voice of the ship, has to go and be on the bridge in case of any emergency announcements. The captain, the team, and the technical team are too busy to be like, here's what's going on, guys. We're that voice. Um, so it turns out, uh, the entire ship lost power, all the way down the ship from the front to the back, everything lost power because we lost an Azipod engine, which is like the propeller essentially, and when something that big trips, it kind of just everything shuts down into emergency mode because it doesn't, if one thing stops and then it just, it could be like a, like a whole effect. So everything went off, went into emergency mode, and then slowly as they figured out what it was, the, the power started coming back on and it starts from vertical zone to vertical zone, and all the ships it starts at the aft, because the aft is main vertical zone one. Riddle me that, I don't know. And it kind of worked its way back. So me, Matt, and John are all on the bridge, and we're like stood on the bridge, you can see all the way down, and you can see that the back of the ship is starting to light up, and slowly, 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 it's working its way forward as it worked out. Everything was fine, no one got injured, no one was hurt, the, the emergency dried out, not a big deal. But all of this happened over about a 45 minute time period. And so me and Matt and John were like, right, let's go to the back and start with the guests that had the lights off for about five minutes and work our way forward, right? So we go down, we go to the back of the ship. In the dining room, we're like, maybe four or five minutes. Hello, Jesus. Um, that's just the rats upstairs, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's just the phone's probably in the backstage. They, the, the lights are there were like off for five minutes. I was like, oh yeah, it was all good. No big deal. Lights went on, service was on, good to go. Then we went to the next fire screen, and it was like, it was it, slowly but slowly, you could see that the panic was kind of setting in the further forward you went, the longer the lights had been off. And everyone was like, okay, it was a 10 to 15 minutes, okay, it was 30 minutes, we literally couldn't do anything. And then we got to the atrium where all the guests had been in the lounge, had been taken out, and they all just stood in the atrium. So it was like wall to wall, people were just in the atrium, and that's where the lights had been off the longest. And on Elegant Night, there's a man named Rob Goble, and he's a very good friend of ours, but he was not a very good friend this day. And he thinks he's an avid cruiser, so he knew that he was safe, he knew that everything was gonna be fine. He thought that it would be funny to go to his cabin and get his life jacket. No. So he went and got his life jacket, went back to the atrium. Then when he's at the atrium, on elegant night, our violin string trio play. No. No. He went up and he paid the girls $100 to play the soundtrack of Titanic. <laughs> so he sparks this life. Chaos. People are like calling their family. People are like, I don't know where my bus station is. I didn't listen. <laughs> it's like people going get their life jackets, and Rob is just cackling this whole time. We get there, and we're like, Rob, what have you done? He was like, Welcome to life, both thirteen, everybody. <laughs> And so the rest of the crews, like they would all just get in their life jackets once an evening and they would go to a different bar and everyone would be like, what is going on? And they called their group the Lifeboat 13 group. And to this day, Rob is one of my very good friends, but I will never forgive him for the panic that he sparked that night. But it was, it was probably the funniest thing. We walked in and it looked like there was just a bunch of ducks in, in the atrium. It was hilarious. But yeah, that's probably the funniest guest story I've ever. There's loads of guest stories that are hilarious, but that one is, it's, it usually takes the cake for sure. I'll go for it. <laughs>
invited to my wedding. That's how good friends we are now. Anyways, you can send that to